Well, here we go, boys and girls. It's that time of the year again where it's time to do the preview of MLS Cup 2021. And for this year's edition of MLS Cup, it's going to be between the Portland Timbers versus NYCFC that will be taking place at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific, and the actual kickoff is 12.23 p.m. local time and is also going to be on ABC if you are watching this in the U.S. And I think if you want to watch this game in Spanish, I think this game is also going to be on 2DN. Now, I mentioned it before yesterday in my News of the Week episode. Unfortunately, I have to work tomorrow. And it's such a shame the fact that, you know, this is going to be the first time in seven years. And really the first time ever since I started to follow this league very, very intensely back in 2015 that I'm actually not going to be watching an MLS Cup game live. Though, I have said before that I am going to DVR this game and I'm going to watch this game right after I finish work, which is around 3 o'clock. And then, of course, I will watch the game and do the review of, of this match. Though, again, the review, unlike previous year, is not going to be right after when the game is over. Which, in some way, there is some benefit that, you know, I can, of course, talk about who, of course, won MVP and, and the fact that I can maybe hear some reaction in terms of each of the the fan base and certainly some analysis from from the the league to talk about how this game of course went on whereas you know in previous year when i do the review right after when the final vis was so is over that's kind of not re really the case where i just kind of go straight dive in into talking about who exactly they of course won won this game and i also don't even get a chance to watch the trophy presentation which is something that i'm pretty sure sure the winning team would really be looking forward to watching right after their team winning mls cup now that being said coming into to this mls cup i'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't predict it that both of these teams were going to be facing off against each other in this year's edition of MLS Cup, consider both of these teams were actually finished fourth in their respective conference. I mean, in some way, the Portland Timbers, I think there are some pe people that could could see them make it all the way to MLS Cup. You know, they have the experience in previous playoff run to go deep into the playoffs. And the team that Giovanni Savarese has built is really seems to be, be a team that, that knows how to get it done into the playoffs and able to make a deep playoff run. And alas, it seems like it happened again this season. But nobody, including myself, would have thought that NYCFC would get get to it. And they really ki kind of have shed some demons throughout this playoffs and kind of proved those naysayers wrong that finally they got over the hump. Now, I'm pretty sure that coming into this game, Ronnie Daly, his message is not going to be just, well, yes, we finally got over that hump of make, making past the second round and now into MLS Cup and everything is going to be fine. I'm pretty sure he's going to tell his, his guys that, you know, this is not just just any game but a game where you know could really solidify their name in in the history of the league and we all know that at the end of this this game only the winner will be re remember as the team like not a lot of people will remember the the loser of an mls cup only the winner will definitely remember for the the rest of of our lives and we'll always talk about who of course win this mls Cup back in 2021. Now, in terms of road to MLS Cup, I mean, I kind of mentioned this before in two different videos that I talked about how both of these teams got to MLS Cup, but just kind of a short version of it. For the Portland Timbers, they finished the season with a 17 4 and 13 record and finished with 55 points. They scored 56 goals this season, but gave up 52 goals, though. You know, that defensive record, while it's definitely not, not good, it has gone be better recently and they have. A plus four goal differential whereas for nycfc they finished the season with a 14 9 and 11 record with 51 points they also scored the same amount of points or the same amount of goals that the portland timbers had at 56 goals but they gave up way less goals than the portland timbers had only 36 goals giving up and have a goal differential of plus 20. in terms of the road to mls cup through through the playoffs well for the portland timbers they were able to come from behind by by winning at home against Minnesota by a score of three goals to one before going on the road against Colorado in a hostile environment. They were able to win one nothing in that game. And then, of course, playing at home against RSL, they were able to pre prevent the Cinderella run of RSL con to continue into MLS Cup by winning 2 nothing at home. Now, for NYCFC, their road to MLS Cup is definitely much 
more difficult with the way that you know besides them them get to play at home in their first game winning two nothing against Atlanta United they have to go to the 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 supporter shield winner New England to try and to get a win and in a game where you know yes the refs they do have that 20 free layoff and a lot of people will talk, will point that at as an a uh, way to kind of show why the Rams maybe weren't up for it. But the fact that they actually got into a PK shootout and the fact that one of the other things that it seems like NYCFC kind of shake off the, the demons in, in this playoff run is able to win a PK shootout. Because I think coming in into this playoffs, I don't think they have ever won a PK shootout. I mean, I know they've been in PK shootout before. Obviously, we know never would forget that PK shootout that they had against Orlando in, in last season playoff, but they always come in to the wrong end of it. And the fact that they came on the right end for for once is kind of a big surprise. And that was also kind of the, the, the point when they finally were able to break the curse of them, unable to get past the second round and making the first ever Eastern Conference Final in their club history, where they, of course, were able to win 2-1 against the Union. And again, I know there's also going to be naysayers saying that, well, the Union were, were completely depleted because of COVID outbreak. But at the end of the day, you know, a win is is a win. And when you look at how that game went, the Union were by far the better team. And, you know, not there's not a lot of time when you are, are basically second best in an Eastern Conference Final and you're so able to make it into to the next round and in that case you know NYCFC despite the fact that they were second best for the majority of the game they just find their mo moment and choose the moment for them to to able to win and move on into MLS Cup and they did exact exactly that in that game in the Eastern Conference now in terms of the top goal scorer for both of these teams for the Timbers you got Felipe Mora who you know people for, for, forget that he's actually the top goal scorer of this team and not Sebastian Blanco I mean a lot of people talk about how Blanco is so so important to this team but you know Mora kind of a forgotten guy a guy that's been on the bench for for this Timbers team he have scored 11 goals coming into this one followed by Darren Espria who of course was suspended in the last last game with 10 goals and then of course we talk about Sebastian Blanco seven goals so far this season and by the way the stats that that is currently I think that also includes some of the play playoff goal so that some of these player has so I think Blanco has moved up the chart with some of his goals that he have scored in the playoffs then you got Jimmy Char with six goals followed by Yarasam Niskoda with three goals to round off the top five for the Portland Timbers for NYCFC of course they have the golden boot winner Tati Castellanos with 19 goals this season, followed by Jesus Medina with nine goals. They got Ishmael Tajuri Shradi with seven goals. Tiago Adronde with four. And then Keaton Parks to round out the top five with four goals. Top assist leader. This is where, where a lot of people talk about why Sebastian Blanco is very important. Because he actually leads the, the team with seven assists. Though he actually is not just the the, the lead leader in terms of the top assist leader chart. Uh, surprisingly, Jimmy Char is actually tied with Sebastian Blanco in terms of the top assist leader with seven assists followed by Marvin Larea with six assists uh, Felipe Mora with five assists and and uh, Marino with four assists for for the Portland Timbers for NYCFC unsurprisingly Maxi Morales leads the team with 11 assists what a playoff run that Maxi Morales has has had this season I'll definitely talk a little bit more about him once we get to to talk about the key points coming into this game uh then he is followed by Tati Castellanos with eight assists and then you got Antoine Tinnerholm with five assists Jesus Medina with four assists and Alfredo Morales who I got to put the the assist number he also has four assists to round out the top five list in this game now in terms of the all-time resort between both of these teams this is the seventh time that both of these teams is going to going to meet but the prior six meeting well the Timbers seems to dominate this series because they have been able to win four out of the or actually no they have won five out of the last six series including the last one where they were able to go to Yankee Stadium and win a 3-1 against NYCFC then it was the Timbers winning one nothing again on the road against NYCFC before the Timbers did win three nothing at home against NYCFC the last time this matchup was at Providence Park then it was a 1-0 win again on the road against NYCFC at Yankee Stadium before NYCFC got their lone win uh, against the Portland Timbers. And that was actually at Providence Park winning 2-1 on the road. And then the Timbers, of course, getting a 1-0 win in the first ever meeting between both of these teams back in 2015. Now, let us get to the key points and kind of the part of the video where a lot of people would, would want 
want me to kind of explain of what could be the difference coming into this game. First of all, you know, I'm going to kind of use a bit of a cliche about this, talking about this game, but there's really nothing thing to, to separate in terms of both of these teams where I expect this to, should be a very closely kind of matchup. I mean, on paper, when you look at both both team and the players and the, the, the benches that both team, team has, and speaking of the bench, we'll talk a little bit more about that in one of the key points that I mentioned. It's pretty even. I mean, it is really hard to t tell, tell in terms of the talent level where both teams definitely had some, some talent and had some difference maker in their team. And really, the, at the end of the day, you know, in the cup final like this, it's all about who, of course, is going to be that, that difference maker. And, you know, that's where we get to the first key points coming into this game where we know the Portland Timbers, their difference maker is Sebastian Blanco. But as we mentioned before with Blanco, he... He, of course, suffered that hamstring injury in that game against the Colorado Rapids. Didn't play in that game against RSL. Now, I have heard that he is now tr back training with the team. And there is actually a, a hint that he could maybe do the impossible and potentially start in this this game for the Timbers. Now, I don't think that, that will be the case. And in some way, you know, I know for Sebastian Blanco, it would be very tempting for him, him to kind of convince recently that he wants to start in this game i mean if you're a player starting in the biggest game of the season the game that you usually don't 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 get to play and it's kind of the pinnacle of your career you do anything to try to get get on to on the pitch but i think you know for savory's sake i think he probably might be smart in this game and the fact that you know i'll be surprised that he does start sebastian blanco in this game i mean i think at the very best i don't think blanco is going to go night 90 minutes i mean you know hamstring injury it's kind of a kind of already a miracle the fact that he is now already back in training because you know even though i'm no no doctor i know hamstring injury usually takes about three to five weeks and you know it's only been what two and a half weeks ever since he 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 injured that ha hamstring in that game against the rapids and you know the fact that he's able to make that quick of a re recovery then you know it's kind of short of nothing but a miracle but at the same time you know if you're blanco and knowing the fact that he's also so started to, to age up there i mean he's not a y young guy guy that may be coming back from an injury too too soon won't harm him he's a guy that is, is approaching his mid-30s and you know when you're getting much older those injury does take time to heal, heal up but like i said you know with how big of this game is he definitely would would want to not miss it but also he needs to know that yeah you don't want to to basically so the i mean you're almost taking taking a gamble the fact that you know you want to play in this game but there is a really big risk that you can reactivate that hamstring injury and if that's the case then yeah blanco could put it could potentially be be suffering some some consequences especially in the off season if he does reactivate that hamstring injury and not to also mention the fact that if you are going to be playing through a hamstring in injury like that you know it'll also be interesting to see how fit blanco is and whether or not if he's going to have that same impact that we see with with him and and with the timbers throughout the season now in terms of on the other side of the pitch and the difference maker for the for nycfc i mean i know a lot of people have been talked about tati castellanos as the difference maker but i'm kind of surprised not a lot of people have mentioned about maxi morales and his his playoff run i mean this has just been an incredible play playoff run and almost a vintage maxi morales that we've seen seen throughout the this playoffs which is kind of something that it's really been one of the crit critics about him of how he tends to perform very well in the regular season but then once the postseason comes he basically is gone invincible well this playoffs he has definitely not gone gone invincible i mean he has de been definitely th that that playmaker that nycfc had and also a goal scorer too you know score that crucial equalizer in the game against the union just a minute after they went down one nothing and i really think that if they did not score that equalizer then i, I didn't think that nycfc was going to come back with the way that the union was was getting so much momentum and that they they really had that sense of belief that they can move on into the next round but like i said the way that he scored that equalizer really kind of turned the tie of the game and it and you know it's not the first time we've seen him come up big in it in a game game like this but it's really kind of the first time we've seen it in a game like a, a playoff game that we have seen and we'll see whether or not if he can of course continue his good run and the fact that he has really developed a good partnership with him 
and Tati Castellanos will will definitely they shows a good good one two two punch in terms of this NYCFC attack. Now the other thing that is a key points coming into this this game is who will actually be dictating this game in Domley the possession and kind of control this game. Now I know on paper you would say that NYCFC is going to do so because I think think some people will think that you know NYCFC a team that known known to like to dominate the possession and also like to press team to try to win back possession high up the pitch they would be the team that trying to dictate the play but 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 you know or actually the other thing that I think people will also think is well you knowing the fact that the Timbers is a team that don't usually like to have possession and they like to be a, a transition team it, it also kind of makes sense the fact that they probably won't dictate the game right well then here's the the thing that maybe you, you might be wrong about that and that you know, for the Timbers, they're playing at home in the in this MLS Cup, and we've seen before where when you're playing at home and it's such a big game like that, you simply have to kind of dictate the game. You don't want to to ba basically just kind kind of bunker and hope that maybe you you have you get get in play, get a, a lucky transitional break going the other end, and of course score score a goal. And I know even though that's what the Timbers likes to do. You, you just think that with how good NYCFC has been this season in terms of dominate possession, they can really wear you down. I don't think that's something that the Timbers want wants to gamble. Now, I would be completely wrong, wrong though. I would would I could could see in a case where both of these teams just kind of go with the bread and butter, and that you know if NYCFC is not, I can also kind of look in the other way where if NYCFC is not careful in terms of the way that they turn the ball over, and especially you know with the press that they of course use. If they aren't able to win the ball high up the pitch, then they leave a huge gap for the Portland Timbers to go on the counterattack. And with how good the Timbers are in the counterattack, probably the best team in terms of being in transitional that space, that is a huge, huge, huge problem for, for this NYCFC team and, and a problem that could potentially cost them MLS Cup uh, in in this game so we'll, we'll see how how the tactics is going to be and we'll see whether or not you know if, you know i think thing in these for in this cup final i know there's always the cliche that in the opening 15 minutes it's going to be a very cagey game before teams kind of open up but we've seen it before where in mls cup it's not the case i mean there's been times where teams likes to go go at it from from the first minute and trying to grab that that crucial first goal so i expect this could be the same case where i don't think it's going to be a cagey game to begin with and that both of the these teams would look to try to get that first goal as soon as possible now uh the other thing that is a key points coming into this game is which team will decide to go to to the bench first and which bench is actually stronger and i mentioned before when you look at the bench of both of these teams it is incredibly strong like for the portland timbers if blanco is not starting in this game he's going to be available off the bench and then you got guys guys like like Nis Niskoda, Moreno, and 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 potentially Mora in coming off the bench in this game. Those are really good good option that the Timbers had. Whereas for NYCFC, they also have some good option off the bench too. You know, they got got the 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 player that of course scored the the win winning goal in the Eastern Conference Final. Tal Talis Magno could definitely make an impact coming off the pitch. They also have ha have some young. Other young player, well, you know, Tal Talis Magno is one of them, but you also got Tiago and Jante. He can definitely make some impact coming off the bench, and then you also got Ishmael Tajiri Shradi, where I think Tajiri Shradi is kind of a uh, of player that if you know if he was on mo most te teams besides NYCFC, he could actually had a chance to maybe be in a starting role. But because of how deep this NYCFC t team is, especially going forward in in the attacking end you know that's the reason why to draw short it kind of relegate him himself to be be on the bench but you know he can definitely be a player that can make a big impact and score some crucial show goal in a big moment so yeah when you look at both bench it's kind of hard to t tell tell who of course is going to have the advantage but also that's where i also go back to to the first part of this question is that which team exactly decide to go to the bench first and it really all depends on how the circumstances the game is going to be like i think if the game does still stay stalemate i won't be surprised it's going to be a ch chess match to see who exactly uh, uh which head coach does have have the the kind of kind of had had the tenacity to try to make a substitution and this also kind of is is where the the head coach for both of these teams is going to be really tested i mean you know 
for 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 throughout these kind of playoff game you've seen head coaches have made make substitution that can change game and you also have seen head coaches that maybe took too long to make some substitution and by then it of course was too late and at least in the last game i thought what ronnie delia did in the last game making substitution early compared to jim curran decided to wait until late in the game i was really the the difference in that that one so we'll see whether or not if he can do it again trying to outsmart giovanni savarisi in terms of making some some substitute off the bench though that being said savarisi have also done a great job in terms of bringing some reinforcement and he's not going to be like like jim curtin i think in this game to just kind of wait until like the 90th minute before he bring on some 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 attackers to kind of fresh things up in this game now the last key points in this game before i get to my bonus key points is that you know we'll also talk about the weather in this game it's going to rain in this one because you know this is portland and you know in the pacific northwest it's always always rain around and this time of the year but the other thing that could be also a factor in this game is wind now originally it looked like the weather report said that this was going to be a very 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 uh, not only a, a game that will feature kind of a, a stormy kind of environment but it's also going to be a very windy game and you know wind definitely could be be a fact factor in terms of the way that if teams like to play over the top or they decide to try to whip the ball into the box then wind can definitely play the pattern of how, how those ball can of course whip into the box or teams try and affect the way the team's trying to go direct but from what i heard that the wind you know it's still going to be windy in this game uh looks like it's going to be up to about 50 miles per hour in in terms of it but it's not in a way where i think it's go going to be too much of a factor but that being said we'll see how this game of course will turn out and also i, I think another thing thing that i also would man mention besides the weather is the home field advantage and that this is a good reminder that only two mls team has been able to win win on the road in an mls cup ever since mls decided to go to neutral venue in the early 2010s and the only two teams are able to do it it's the portland timbers and the seattle sounders so if nycfc is going to try to once again defy the odds and trying to 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 basically shock a lot of people and kind of beat the daredevil like they did throughout this playoffs they need to do it again but by only becoming the third mls team and also becoming the first mls team in the eastern conference to win a road game in in mls cup uh but the last key points and kind of the bonus key points coming into this game is is diego is this diego valeri swan song game and actually i kind of want to rephrase th this because i'm pretty sure this is the the last game that Diego Valeri will be playing for the Portland Timbers. I mean, this season he hasn't been been really been a factor for the Timbers. And even though in the last game I thought he was going to come come in with the way way that you know would block oh, be, being out out for for the team, I thought Valeri would be the guy to kind of re replace him. And he has one last heroic, heroic kind of performance for this Timbers team as he has shown throughout the years. But that just doesn't seem like it's going going to be the case and you know the fact that he has barely been playing this season it just kind of shows you maybe maybe this is really the end but you know i won't be surprised that he he could also be one one of the substitute that giovanni Savarisi could ring ring off and could make a huge impact and oh boy imagine in this game diego valeri scoring the winning goal for the portland timbers to win mls cup 2021 you you talk about about a Hollywood with script to end what has been just an incredible career and just instantly a Timbers legend and a guy that is definitely gonna get it going to get a statue and outside of Providence Park. Yeah, I mean that I, I can definitely see that that could could be be the case. Even though, as I said, Larry has not been been a player that has been very impactful for this Timbers team, and it just feels like this this is really it for for him in terms of the last season. But if he does come off the bench, I would definitely keep it close eye on him and the fact that you know it'll be interesting to see whether or not if he can of course finish it, his timbers ca career on a high because you know the old saying goes you want to finish your your career whether it's your playing career or a, a your career with a team for a very long time on top and diego valeri does have a chance to do so if the portland timbers does live mls cup after this game but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys see you like smash the subscribe button notice i didn't mention uh, who exactly is going to win this game. I mean, I kind of already made my prediction when I, I did the bracket back 
back a couple of weeks ago. And surprisingly, you know, the team that I predicted to win MLS Cup is still standing as we reach MLS Cup. So, you know, I, I've already said that the Timbers is going to win this game, even though I, I didn't think that they would be, be at this stage and especially playing uh, against an Eastern Conference team that is NYCFC. But I'm still going to stick to my ground to say that the Timbers is going to win this game if I had to make a prediction. But let me know in the comments below your prediction for this game. Do you think the Timbers is going to win their second MLS Cup in, in five years? Or will NYCFC will, will finally erase all those bad memories they had in, in the, the playoffs in the past couple of years and win their first ever MLS Cup and become the first Eastern Conference team to win an MLS Cup on the road. But either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do make sure you guys like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.